morning. It's good to see you. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning to praise Him and celebrate Him and honor and worship Him and just to fellowship with each other as well. Bem-vinda. Welcome, Tony, Fatima. We missed you guys. Welcome back to this church, which is your church. <laughs> we hope you had a good time there. Let's stand up, please, if you can. Welcome everybody that is watching online. We are here to praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I am going to read a portion of the Bible in Psalms 103 from verse 1 to 5. This verse has to do with the song, the first song we are going to sing. And it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. We say amen to this, right? We want our youth to be renewed like the eagles. And God, he has the ability to renew us. The word of God says that we are renewed day by day, not in our exterior part but on the interior in our words in word we are being renewed every day by the spirit of god amen so there is not old people we are all young all young at heart amen we are all young at heart let's say amen <laughs> amen <laughs> you are with me we're going to praise the lord with this first song bless the lord of my soul hallelujah we bless you jesus Amen. Let's, it's a happy song. Let's sing and shout out loud. It's a song that we all know. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, my soul. Worship His holy name. And sing like this. Worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be seen.
We came to worship. We came to adore. We came to praise your holy name, God. You are worthy. You are worthy to be praised, Jesus Christ, our God and our King. And this next song we're going to sing, it talks about the goodness of God. And in Psalm 23, verse 6, it says, Goodness and mercy will follow me every day of my life. Believe that. Goodness and mercy will follow us every day of our lives. Amen. Thank you, Father, for your love, for your goodness that will follow us every day of our lives. We can count on that. We can be sure on that. God never fails. He's faithful. Let's sing this song. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. All my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing. The goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am made The goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In darkest nights, you are close like no other. Yes, you are.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Father, for adopting us into your family. We belong to you. We belong to you forever, Lord. Hallelujah. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone and I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. We are sons and daughters of God, amen. You are children of God. God is your Father. He's protecting you and me. Yes, He is. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Deliverance We've been 
got you. I'm no longer a slave to any fear because I am a child of God. Oh, I'm no longer a slave to fear because I am a child of God. Hallelujah, Father. There is nothing better than knowing that nothing can separate us from you. Nothing, no one, nor diseases, not, not death, not nothing, no one and nothing can separate us from you. You hold us in the palm of your powerful hand, Lord. That's why we can have this sense of safety and security. We know that you love us. And Father, we are in your hands. No matter what comes our way, we are secure in your hands. Your word says that Either we live or either we die. We are yours. We are yours. So there is peace. There is peace and calm in our hearts, Father. Although we see the news and they are not good news, Lord, what surrounds us, Lord. But you know you have a purpose and you are still in control. You are still on the throne and you are still God and your word will be fulfilled. Whatever you said will come to pass. And we know that your people are in your hands. There is nothing to fear when we fear the Lord Almighty and we fear, we reverence you. Hallelujah, God. We have no words enough to express our gratitude. All oh, my words for sure I got none
Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I've nothing else fit for a king, except for a heart singing Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, we want to present the best gift ever, which is our praise. It, it's the worship that you deserve, Lord. We are not looking for human sacrifices or animal sacrifices. We are not looking for anything other than our praise and our worship. A heart of gratitude. And Lord, we have so many reasons today to be grateful. So many reasons to be grateful. But so many times, Lord, we take everything for granted in our lives. And we forget that everything we have comes from you. Without you, without you, we couldn't have what we have. And Lord, and today, when so many people, special in Middle East, in Israel, and Gaza Strip are losing their lives, are losing their belongings, are losing their loved ones. Lord, we should think how grateful we should be to live in a country that is at peace, freedom, and we have freedom to come together and lift up our voices to worship you. When there is brothers and sisters all over the world right now they have been killed and they are being killed and tortured because of their faith in you lord we have the freedom to grab a bible and walk with the bible in our hands and some brothers and sisters right now their hands have been shredded just because they had the odyssey to pick up a bible with their hands so lord help us lord and help us to understand the privilege that we have. We are so privileged. And Lord, help us to be thankful and present a heart, have a heart of gratitude to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all, every single blessing that you put out in our lives. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Father. Today, before church, before we, we go into the Word of God, I would like you uh, to take some time to pray. Um, let's pray for uh, Pastor Ismael. He was supposed to be with us today. He had been sick since last uh, uh, Tuesday, or last Wednesday, actually. Um, uh, someone told him that I, I didn't talk with him directly. Uh, I sent him a message, let me see if he replied, no, not yet, uh, but someone told me that he got COVID, uh, so let's pray for him, you know, uh, for strength over his body, for a quick and total recover uh, of uh, brother and pastor Ismail, okay, and as well, let's keep praying for the Middle East situation, the crisis over there. Uh, there is lots of innocent people being killed and lots of innocent people, they're going to be killed still with it, that conflict going to be a bloodshed we know that um, and it's so complicated the situation but we uh, as a church of Jesus as the church of Jesus we should pray and intercede for all the innocents they're going to be they were killed all be killed for those families that you know lost their loved uh, ones and um, you know let's pray for those terrorists that God you know yesterday I heard something that you know could seem a little bit harsh but that's the truth and it was a pastor who was saying let's pray for those terrorists from Hamas to be saved or to be killed or to die to just disappear because you know they are making lots of people suffering and make people's life you know hell so or they will be saved and transformed which is possible 
which is possible. I, I was listening to a testimony of a, a, a soldier from Hamas that converted to Jesus Christ. Another one from Iran that, you know, he converted to Jesus Christ. He used to be one of the soldiers for Hezbollah in the north of Israel, in Lebanon. And he converted to Jesus Christ. And now he's, you know, announcing the gospel of peace of Jesus. Um, so let's pray because in the church we have, you know, that responsibility. And special pray for peace in Jerusalem. Psalm 122, verse 6, it says that we should pray for peace over Jerusalem. And the, the, the ones that do that, they will be blessed. So let's pray, okay? Father, right now, we want to bring Pastor Ismael into the throne of God. Lord, we are not certain what's going on, on with his body, with his health. But one thing I know, Lord, that you are more than able, more than able, Lord, to make him completely healed right now and we pray that the blood of Jesus will come over his body and give him the strength and the health and uh, that he needs the energy the favor of God upon his uh, upon his body right now I pray that he will feel the Holy Spirit coming through his body and Lord make his immune system strong and recover him Lord 100% Lord we pray as well for um, Nelson's ex-wife when she has terminal cancer and she's suffering so much right now no we don't know where she is right now when it when it comes to her relationship with God but she she, she know you she knew you before she was serving you we don't know where she is right now when it comes to our relationship with God. But Lord, one thing I know, you can make a miracle in her body. You can recover completely. I don't know if it's at your will or not, Lord, but we pray your will be done. But Lord, right now when she's suffering and she's bleeding and doctors, they don't know what to do, Lord, we know a doctor that can do anything. So we pray over her, Lord. We pray your blessings, your favor your will to be done I pray for Isaiah Nelson's son give him peace give him strength to that little young guy when he sees his mother suffering Lord give him the strength that he needs in this time and peace to his on his heart Father Jesus and Lord as as, a, as the church of Jesus Christ we want to pray for Israel peace over Israel peace over that land that you gave to your people Lord we pray that uh, Lord stop with that bloodshed of innocent people the ones Lord that cause all of this conflict they need to pay and they need to bring, bring to face just the, the justice but Lord the, the innocents those little kids from both sides in Gaza Strip and Israel they are being killed innocent people have mercy oh Lord have mercy on them have mercy Lord have mercy you are the Prince of Peace and I pray that Israeli people they will come to know Jesus the Messiah as the Prince of Peace and I pray that peace will reign among those two nations Lord on all over that region Lord peace will reign in Jesus name in Jesus name amen hallelujah hallelujah glory to God glory to God you may be seated uh, the boys they can go with Andre they're gonna have their class with Andre so Gabriel Miguel Tiago Samuel Guys, you guys can go with Andre. Andre, can you wave so they will see where you are? Go with him. And the other kids, I think they're going to go with Linda. I don't know if it, with Judd as well. I'm so glad that we are starting having kids again hmm? in our family. It's so good uh, to have kids and around. I love the sound of kids, you know. <laughs> I just love it. Okay. So today 
we are going to our um, fourth uh, part of this series, The Path. And today we're going to talk about the power of words. Like, as you know, by now, this series is based on Proverbs. So we are basically studying the book of Proverbs uh, and learn what we can get from the Word of God for our daily lives. And um, probably the book of Proverbs, it's the most practical book in the Bible when it comes to insight for our daily living. Uh, you know, tips, instructions, information for our daily living according to God's will for our lives. <clears throat> so today we'll keep diving into the book of Proverbs and see the power of words. Uh, and the book of Proverbs, you know, is loaded with wisdom on this subject about the power of words. Um, I'm not going to read all the verses just in this book of Proverbs about the words and power of words. I'm going to read lots. Uh, I'm going to mention other ones. Uh, and if you want, I can give you a, a long list just in this book about the power of words. There is lots of insight, lots of information. <clears throat> Our words... Our speech can lead us down into distant paths. A good path or a bad path, a right one or a wrong one, according to the words that we speak. <clears throat> I believe there is lots of people, they are having miserable lives because of the power of the words, the negative words that they've been speaking towards themselves or to a, towards others and they are suffering the consequences there is other people they are you no know, just harvesting the blessings because they've been talking according to the word of god and talking blessings over them or uh, over other ones so our speech our words can lead us into distant different paths uh, but before we go into the book of proverbs let me just lay here some foundation based in genesis just to remind us i know you know but just to remind us about the power of words when god created the world as we know it well not completely as it is right now not very, uh, but when god created the world this world that we know the physical world world was all done by the power of the word god said let there be light and there was light and then God said let there be a space between the waters to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth and it happened and so on and so on for six days God spoke God spoke and it happened power the creative power of the words uh, of God you know until the last day the sixth day God said let us make men or let us make human beings okay men and women because in our days, you need to be careful. Because if we just say, man, someone will come, hey, what about this? What about those? You know? Because now it's not just man and woman. It's man, woman, and X. Whatever. But God said, let's make human beings in our image to be like us. That's what God said. Let's make man and woman in our image so they can be like us. So, when we go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, and verse 3, it says, By faith, so it needs to be by faith. You, you can, you know, it's nothing that you can see or you can touch. It's by faith that we need to understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. The, the word Rema of God. So, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen what we see that was created by god didn't exist before god created by the power of his words so our world according to hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3 was uh, framed by the words of god our world our lives do when i say our world the life that surrounds up around us you know it's framed by the words that we use by the word that we speak because our words have the power to create why because we were created in God's likeness and God's image that's what Hebrew said that we uh, th that's what G uh, Genesis said God created man 
to his image to be like him. So the same power that God had in his words to create, we have the same power. Our words have power to create as well. So our world is framed like was framed when God spoke. Our word is framed as well by the words that we speak. You know, in Ephesians chapter 6, it talks about the armor of God. And then at the end, it says, put on, put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. What is the purpose of a sword? To protect, you know, to defend and to attack as well. So when we speak the word of God, when we proclaim the word of God, there is power that is released. Are you getting it? When you use a sword, when a, a soldier uses use a sword to, you know, to defend, to protect or to attack, there is power in that sword. You no, know? and they can kill someone. You know, they can cut something. There is power in that war, in that sword. There is power in the sword of the Spirit, in the Word of God. When you talk it, when you declare it, when we speak it, when we use it, there is power that has been released as well. That's why we need to know the Word of God. That's why we like to give Bibles to people, so people they can read, they can memorize, and they can use this sword. Because there is power on, on the words when we, re, when we proclaim the Word of God. So we align our spoken words you know, with the written word of God and things happen. That's, what, it, that's what, what, what happens. We can, with our words, speak death and destruction or life and victory. The same mouth, the same tongue, the same you know, person can speak death and destruction or life and victory. So what do you what are you speaking into your own life what are you speaking into other ones life around you so let's start going more now into the book of proverbs so our words they have the power for life or for death that's what word tells us i'm going to read two uh one verse but in two different you know um uh, versions first it's the message proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21 it says the message it's a more contemporary version for our days i like lots when i'm preparing messages to read uh, from that uh, uh, version and then mostly i use niv for the church but for my personal uh, studying i like message it says words kill words give life they are either poison or fruit you choose the same verse in NIV it says it's more familiar. You are more familiarized with, the, with that version. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who live it, live it, will eat its fruit. There is power in our words. Power for life or power for death. What are you speaking? What are you speaking to your wife, to your husband, to your children, to your friends, to your co-workers? Are you speaking life or death? Are you speaking doom and gloom or blessing and beauty? You know, I heard so many people talking to each other, you know, husband and wife and to parents, to kids and vice versa. In, in some ways, even, I, I, you know, that bothers me. Some, just listening to, it, to that, you know. You are no good. You are a lazy bum. You are overweight. You are, you are this and you are that, you know, just negative words guess what you are not speaking using those words you are not speaking a blessing over the people over people you know so we need to start changing the, the our wording our words you know according to the word of god you know for, i'm just going to give you two examples when you speak to your wife instead you know speaking you know those crazy words and, and expressions why not telling her something like this you are the daughter of the most high god you are holy and beautiful inside and out you are the apple of god's eyes and he, he has his favor upon you you are talented wise gifted you are a blessing to me and to our home 
How many times did you, did you say this to our spouses? You are a blessing to me. You are a blessing to our family, to our home. No. Tell your wife, no other woman captures my eye and my attention like you do. You, know, you are all I need, all I want. You fulfill me. You complete me. You are an absolute, an absolute most amazing you know, human being, uh, the most amazing human being that I know. And, you know, talk basically the same back to your husband. And talk the same to your kids, you know. Because that's going to bring life to them. The, the opposite will bring death. Um, our words can hurt, can help, or can bless, but, or can blame. It, according to the words you choose, it's going to be the path that you're going to go down. Can hurt or help, can bless or blame. Most of us, unfortunately, in our daily lives, we underestimate the impact of our words. Um, <clears throat> psychologists, they've been doing so many studies, and um, we have two psychologists, you know, in the house, so I need to be careful with the, what I say. But, you know, they say that a person's self-worth, it's often defined by what others say about them and to them. That's why it's so important when you talk with kids, the way you talk to your kids. Because, you know, their self-worth is going to be based, is going to grow or not, based on what they hear. People telling about them. If a, a dad or a mom tells a kid, you are a lazy guy, you don't do anything right. Guess what? And you repeat it and you repeat it, that's what they're going to understand. I'm nothing. I don't have any worth. I can do anything right. And they will never do in life anything right. So words can hurt, can help, can bless or can blame people. So you need to be very, be very, be, need to be very careful. So I have so many verses, like I said today, but I'm going to just try to read not all of them, but some, uh, uh, some of them. Um, Proverbs, let's say, for, for instance, Proverbs 15, 4, it says, Kind words are good medicine, but deceitful words can really hurt. You know? Um, or like, let me see if I have a ear. Uh, no, I don't. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't have. Uh, but Proverbs 12, it's verses 18 and 19 says, Some people make uh, cutting remarks but the words of the wise bring healing or Proverbs 26 18 and 19 it says just as damaging as a madman shooting a deadly weapon is someone who lies to a friend and then says I was only joking how many times you heard people saying a stupid thing and then they say a stupid phrase to someone and they say oh I was just joking I was just kidding guess what those words, although you said, oh, I'm just joking, I was just kidding, the damage is made, is done. People heard that and they got it inside, okay? And we can retrieve words. You can excuse yourself, oh, sorry, I just, I was just playing around, I was just being, you know, stupid, I was just being, I was just kidding, I was just joking. But the damage is there, the hurt is there. So you need to be careful with our words because words can cut our soul like knives very down deep sometimes it hurts more when bad word than you know a slap on the face and in some cases potentially cause permanent damage to our self image to our confidence on our uh, in our soul i have so many verses yeah i'm not going to read them all uh, but for instance chapter 10 and verse 32 the lips of the godly speak helpful words but the mouth of the wicked speaks perverse words or ch chapter 10 but verse 20 and 21 it says the words of the godly are like sterling silver the heart of a fool is wordless the words of the godly encourage many but fools are destroyed by their lack of common sense so, are you catching the power of your words? 
our words they have power to bless people to help people to lift up people and that's what we should do with our words when it come you know to our words we should consider the next point which is often the best approach that we have in life that we could have in life it's to remain silent sometimes it's because if you don't know what to say don't say it if you are not sure what you're going to say going to bless someone zip it. be quiet be silent proverbs 21 verse 23 it says watch your tongue and keep your mouth shut and you will stay out of trouble isn't that true that's the word of god that says that's a great advice if you don't know what to say don't say it if you are not sure if you're going to bless or not don't say it because so many times we say it and then was a stupid thing to say and oh sorry that's it it's done it's over that's two there are two things at least in in life that you can take back words spoken and time the last minute i can get it back i can't last second i can't the words when they came out that's it the damage could be done forever how many of us gotten in trouble by saying things we shouldn't say or it's just me probably just me not you guys you are all saints and perfect but i've been put myself in trouble so many times because of things that i said wrong because i didn't think properly uh because of emotions because you know whatever and then bang damage is done and we got in trouble and then we try to justify ourselves but it's too late so silence sometimes it's the right the right thing to do because silence it's powerful it's powerful you know in certain moments and silence sometimes speaks louder than words so silence is so powerful even words on fools like we already uh, you know uh, read one of the verses but verse uh, chapter 17 and verse 28 says it again even fools are thought wise when they keep silent with their mouth shut they seem intelligent a fool seems intelligent when they are because you know no one listen a word doesn't want to know have an idea what they're going to say or how full they are because they are silent even fools you know words on full listening is often more valuable than speaking we should be more prompt to listen than to speak you know um and there is verses for that as well i don't have it all like, like i said all, on the screen today but proverbs 25 12 it says to one who listens valid criticism is like a gold earring or other gold jewelry um my question is for myself and for all of us are we willing to hear and learn proverbs 13 3 it says those who control their tongues will have a long life opening your mouth can ruin everything how many times i already said to people and probably you did the same you better be we, we better stay your mouth shut you will do a, 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 you'll do a better work if you stay with your mouth shut shut sorry you will do a better work and that's true you know but sometimes you know we want to ever say we want to take you know give our two cents and sometimes they are the wrong words that we are using um, sometimes it's very you no know, in certain conversations in certain circles to just walk away and not say anything and you know and special one are uh, having some you know uh, conversations that are not going well on the right direction and there is some conflict it's better to shut and walk away I know then saying something here walk away another thing when it comes to words that we need to uh, do in order to use words properly it's we 
always must speak the truth in love. Not just speak the truth, but speak the truth in love. Okay? Um, and here is God's heart. Let, this, let, let me show you the God's heart. Proverbs 12, 22. The Lord detests lying lips, but He delights in those who tell the truth. And then on, on uh, verse 19, it says, Truthful words stand the test of time, but lies are soon exposed. You know, I'm not going to say names, but I used to have someone in our family that, you know, was always lying and covering one lie with another lie with another lie. But the problem with lying is sometimes you forgot what you said. And then you are exposed. Because you are using a lie to cover up a lie, to cover up a lie. But you already forgot what your excuse was, your lie was. And suddenly you are exposed. And on the other side, if you speak always the truth, it's going to be always the same thing. Always the same version. It doesn't matter what. It doesn't matter how many times you tell it. It doesn't matter how long you said last time that same sentence. If it's the truth, it's going to be always the truth. So you need to always, you know, tell the truth. But, you know, again, the Bible tells us to always speak the truth in love. And in love, it's important. Because there is people that say, Oh, I am like this. I say it when I have to say it. I say it straight as it is. Well, be careful. Because sometimes the truth can hurt people. Or people that are not in a, in a position to hear that at that present time. Wait for another time. We need to be careful. You need to, and the way you, we say it. You can't tell the truth. Yeah, it is the truth. But the truth sometimes hurts. And it doesn't help as much as if you tell the truth in a different time or with a different kind of words. Kind words in love. So we need to ask God, you know, for uh, 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 guidance when to tell the things and how to say it. But always tell the truth, always speak the truth in love. You know what? What I notice in my life uh, and probably you too as well, and it's based on the Bible, that most of the times, usually, you know, people appreciate an uh, honest criticism when it's done in love sometimes you know we react because we don't like you know to have fingers being pointed to us we don't like to be exposed but you know down there down here some we like you know that you know sincere honest criticism and the bible tells us that proverbs 28 Verse 23. I don't have the verse to show you there, but I have it here. In the end, people appreciate honest criticism far more than flattery. You know? So, always speak the truth in love because there is power in your words. We must, we must choose confidence over gossip. Gossip is a problem that we have human beings. Gossip is a problem in the church. In our days, social media, it's a problem when it comes to gossip. Social media is a, is a it's like a, a flamethrower, you know, to every aspect of goss, gossip, lies and rumors. You know, be careful with what you read in social media. Don't believe everything you see post on Facebook or Instagram or, you know, TikTok or whatever social uh, platform. Don't believe everything. I saw so many, so many people, and some of you are seated here today, posting or reposting things on Facebook. They are fake news. They are not real news. They are not real things. Always, you need to do a research and see because everyone can post whatever they want on Facebook in our days. And making arguments about what they are po uh, you know, and trying to defend what they are uh, uh, posting, being the truth. But it's not. You need to be, uh, you know, be, be careful. And some people, 
everything they do, it's to, they, they can't live without Facebook every day. Go and see what's going around. What people are doing, what people are, you know, posting. And, and talking, you know, they don't have the courage to tell people eye on eye what they think, but they write on Facebook or other uh, social media platform. And they are, you know, being, being attacking people, character. And, and, you know, because they don't have, you know, the courage to tell the truth and, you know, eyes on eyes. So social media, it's a big problem in, in our days. People are sharing things um, that they don't have an idea if it's true or not. And rumors start and gossiping, gossiping, gossip starts. In the, in, the, in the dictionary, gossip, it means there is two, two, two classifications of gossip or, or two definitions, better saying, of gossip. Gossip is a rumor or report of an intimate nature or a person who habitually uh, reveals personal or sensational sensu, 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 <laughs> facts about others. That's gossip, you know. Proverbs 18, 8, it says, The words of one who speaks about others in secret are like tainting bites of food. They go down into the inside parts of the body. And um, the problem is when you saying things, of pe about people they are not right makes damage makes damage you know again I have another list of verses here that I could read but um, I don't have it there because it was too many for, for under prepared during the week so I have it there Proverbs 25 23 it says as surely as north wind brings rain so a gossiping tongue causes anger Or Proverbs 11, 11, 12, and 13. Upright citizens are good for a city and make it prosper. But the talk of the wicked tears it apart. It is foolish to belittle one's neighbor. A sensible person keeps quiet. A gossip goes around telling secrets. But those who are trustworthy can keep a confidence. So we need to be careful the word that we use. It is gossip or are confident words. When you doubt, when you don't know uh, if it's true or not, if it's right or not, if you have doubts, don't let it go. You know, just close, shut your mouth. Let me give you the answer for that problem. Proverbs 26, verse 20. Fire goes out without wood, right? You are a making a fire after a while if you don't keep you know adding some wood extinguish the fire so fire goes out without wood and perils disappear when gossip stops problems among people disappear when people stops you know gossiping talking bad on people's backs my last point for today Let's be that kind of people that we are encouragers, you know, uh, instead of throwing people down. Let's be encouragers. Let's be, let's use the power of words to bless. Proverbs 10, 11, it says, The words of the godly are a life-giving fountain. The words of the wicked conceal violent intentions. Or James uh, chapter 3, he says it this way. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth comes praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be. So let's be encouragers. Be let's be pe people that will like, you know, put other ones up and lift them up with the words that we use. So let's be a fountain, you know, like it says on chapter 10 and, and, and verse 11. And I'm going to read again. Let's be that life-giving fountain. The words of the God are life-giving 
fountain. So let's be that for others. Speaking words of love and blessing. Affirm them and give them, you know, compliments. You look great today. Wow, look at you. You are so in shape. You are beautiful. You are an amazing person. You know, you are a child of I must, I must, uh, <coughs> God. Let, let's, you know, give good compliments. Honor them and give them value. Instead, you don't, you're good for nothing. You don't do anything good. Whatever your kid does, even a little thing, you know, show them value. Thank you for what you did. You did a great thing. Oh, well done. Okay, let's, let's keep encouraging people. Let's speak to each other with respect. Okay, just because you have the truth, you know, and want to tell the truth, be careful how we use your words. You know, speak always with respect to uh, everyone. Be positive and encouraging. Stop calling your kids or other people things like, you are stupid, you are a dummy, you are this, you are that. Let's stop those kind of words. Let's stop cutting them down, okay? And start speaking their God-given destiny, God-given identity. No, let's give a voice to our beliefs and not to their actions. Because sometimes we call those names, you're stupid, you're dumb, you're this, because of their actions. But instead of classifying them based on their actions, let's classify them based on what we believe. Okay, for instance, when you want to call your, 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 your daughter and you already called one, twice, and they never, you know, answered back or they didn't come right away. And I know, especially moms are, they start, you know, elevating the tone of voice the volume of voice and starting calling by the first and last name or first and second name my mom when i was little if she was mad at me she wouldn't come just hey pedro come here now pedro antonio oh i knew i was in problem when she called pedro antonio oh man something is coming usual you know she would come to me with a shoe in her hand or you know a wood spoon in her hand uh, in her hand so instead of you know start calling your kid you know in a bad way who's things like this probably gonna you're gonna laugh at, at, at it but laugh at it but that's the that's that's truth call him like this come here you smart blessed creative organized godly daughter of mine although you know you look to her to you know to a room it's a mess you know and you just want to say something to her but you know come here you organized you know daughter of mine or come here blessed you know if they make like kids does i hope that lee would never do uh, you know they like to use walls as a white board or a black board you know instead of you know oh look at what you did come here you creative daughter of mine okay to to finish and conclude our time today um, I believe there is people here probably and people they are listening to our stream that you know uh, potentially you have people around you have lied to you about God saying things about God that is not right things like this God is mad at you. I already heard people saying this to other people. God is mad, mad at you. No, wrong, never, never. It's a lie. Oh, what you did, you have gone too far. We have committed, you know, oh, an unpardonable sin. There is no hope for you. No, wrong. When you ran from God, uh, and gave up on your faith for some reason. Some people they say, "Oh, there is no return. Oh, you you are done. You you are done. You are doomed. You're gonna go straight to well. No, there's always a possibility to return back. God loves you. That's the truth. God loves you. It doesn't matter what you did. It doesn't matter what we have been going. God loves you." He's not mad at you. He doesn't hate you. No, He loves you. And more than that, and even more, 
It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what they've been doing. God looks to you and sees value. He sees value. And God knew even before you were conceived in your mother's home. He already knew, knew you. He called you by name. And He looks to you and He sees value. It doesn't matter if no one else around us sees any value on us. God looks to us and He sees value and He wants to use us. So, life and death, it's in the power of our words. What do you choose? Do you choose the poison or do you choose the fruit? It's up to us. Amen? May God help us to use the right words and be be conscious of the power that entitles in our words so you can choose the right path okay like we've been seeing the last three Sundays there is different things that you can do in life to choose the right path and words it's another one of them may God help us let's stand up before we go for our connect cafe hallelujah I don't know if there is any prayer request. If everyone has any prayer request that you want to, for us to pray before we go. Everyone's okay. Everyone's good. That's great. That's great news. Once again, it's good to see the Isidoros back. We miss them. It's good to see, you know, we are a family and uh, we like to have the family around. So it's so good. Um, so don't forget Wednesday, Tuesday night, we have our ESL class, English Corner. Um, at seven on the building on the other side so thank you stephanie for the great job stephanie sister janice uh and uh, stephanie's mom as well they are you know teaching we had the great was so successful the first class we had 10 new students and six of, the, of them never came to church they are not church related at all you know out of those 10 six they are not uh, church related so from the community and that's our goal it's rich people so uh, of course we don't see them here today that's not the goal to see them on the first Sunday in church but eventually eventually so uh, thank you uh, Janice and thank you Stephanie and Marion she's not here but doing a great job uh, was very good so on Tuesday night at 7 and then Wednesday night at 7 as well here upstairs we have our prayer meeting okay so let's bow our heads and let's pray. Thank you, Father, for this time together as family around the table and have you, having you in the center of everything we do. Lord, thank you because you lay down the table for us with good food. Help us, Lord, to eat properly. And now, Lord, we pray that as we go, we pray that your blessing will go with us. We pray that you will help us as we go and work or to school or whatever we're going to do we pray that uh, we will follow your footsteps we will do things according to your will we'll go wherever you lead us to go because in everything we want to lord do your will in our lives otherwise we can pray like we've been praying your will be done in our lives as it is in heaven but that's our goal so lord help us every one of us and lord and based in what we heard today Lord help us to be careful with our words the way we speak Lord sometimes it's better to be in silence so help us give us wisdom Lord because everything we say Lord we hope to bless people to help people to encourage people to lift people people's up when they are down we want to lift them up Lord we want to encourage them we want people to to find their destiny to their purpose in life their place in life so help us help us when we speak to our loved ones our husband or our wife or our children our friends help us Lord help us like Solomon presented to us depends on us we choose the poison or the fruit help us to choose right father when you are about to say something that is not right, Lord, shut our mouth up. Help us, Father. Give us wisdom. We need your wisdom, Father, to keep going on the right path. The path that takes us to heaven. Lord, as we conclude this service today, Lord, 
Keep us safe and sound as we go. Give us a good time now of fellowship and communion together, Lord, so we can keep blessing your name and uh, in the word that we use, even around the table. In Jesus' name we pray and we give you thanks. Amen. Amen. Okay, church, have a great Sunday. So let's have some time together and use right words to one another when we are around the tables and having coffee. Amen. God bless you.